Hello, I'm Bob Harris. Welcome to Duraman's educational series for industrial and decorative concrete flooring systems. The commonly used resins in the flooring industry are epoxy, polyurethane, polyaspartic, polyurea, vinyl esters, and methyl methacrylate, which is commonly referred to as an MMA. All of these resins are two-part systems. The resin is mixed with a hardener on site to harden and form a flooring system. MMA is an acrylic methacrylic ester. It is combined with organic peroxide. More technically, it is a catalyst rather than a hardener. It initiates a reaction that converts the liquid resin into a solid mass. The two distinct advantages of MMA-based resin floors are quick return to service and cold temperature cure. In most cases, epoxy and polyurethane based do not cure properly in temperatures below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Conversely, MMA-based floors can be installed in temperatures close to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. These rapid curing systems are an ideal solution for interior and exterior installations in which minimal downtime is required. The low temperatures cure capability allows them to be used during cold weather and in freezers and coolers. They are highly resistant to UV light, staining and marring, and they do not chalk or yellow. For more than 35 years, methyl methacrylate acrylic reactive resins have been used in environments such as food processing plants, pharmaceutical facilities, and heavy industrial plants. MMA resin requires negative air movement to ensure proper curing. Blowing air directly across the surface of the MMA, positive air, is not advised as it will reduce the working time of the resin. The MMA odor may need to be vented outside of the project site occupied by other workers. There should not be any open flames in the vicinity of the work or in areas where the fumes can concentrate. Review SDS sheets before working with MMA resins. Always protect yourself and wear the appropriate OSHA approved respirator when working with these types of products. For exterior work or interior work in large open spaces such as a warehouse or large manufacturing processing area, negative air movement typically is not necessary to achieve proper cure, assuming the odor does not need to be vented. Smaller rooms will require setting up uh, negative air with explosion proof fans. On this panel we're going to be demonstrating the MMA elastomeric deck system. This system consists of applying a primer followed by a body coat and then a top coat. The total thickness uh, ranges between an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch depending on the project requirements. The installed system can be textured or left smooth. The system can be installed from 90 degrees Fahrenheit all the way down to minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Applications below 40 degrees will require cold temperature additive. This is the method to mix and apply the primer. You add the Macrolix uh, HOO hardener to the Macrolix P12 resin following the mix ratios charts which is provided in the, in the product data sheets. Mix the material for two minutes using a slow speed drill and a jiffy mixer. Once the material is thoroughly mixed, pour mix the mixed resin in ribbons onto the substrate and once you've uh, distributed the material and poured it in ribbons, you're going to use a notch squeegee to spread the material uniformly making sure there is no puddles What's really crucial with the system is to apply it at a coverage rate of 100 square feet per coat per gallon. Once you have it all uh, laid down with the notch squeegee, you're going to back roll with a medium nap 3 8 of an inch roller. On very absorbent surfaces, it may require two coats to get an even resin rich surface to bond with the next layer. Once you have the material down, you then broadcast lightly uh, with silica sand, 30 mesh or colored quartz aggregate at approximate coverage rate of 5 to 10 pounds per 100 square feet. Um, after that, apply the next layer only after the primer has completely hardened. We're getting ready to install our Macrolix P12 MMA primer. Remember, as part of the system, we have an MMA hardener, which is simply a powder that mixes into the uh, P12. Now, refer back to the uh, material data sheets because it's going to give you ratios uh, based on the ambient temperature. So for example, we are, uh, we've determined that it's roughly 60 degrees Fahrenheit in the warehouse for the purpose of this video shoot and we've determined that we're going to go ahead and we're going to mix four ounces of the MMA hardener based on the ambient temperature into the, uh, the Macrolix P12. So it's, it is very crucial that you follow the recommended charts that's provided in the in the tech data sheets. So there's our four ounces. Now 
anytime you're working with these materials, it is really, really important that you wear an OSHA approved respirator. Um, obviously for the purpose of this video only, I can't talk while I have this on. So please um, adhere to your safety when using these types of products. Now the first thing that we've done is we've taken the lid off of the, the Macrolix P12 and we've previously agitated with a slow speed Jiffy mixer. And the reason for that is, is uh, when the product is sitting on the shelf or on a pallet, the solids tend to settle out. So we want to get a homogeneous mix. Since we've done that and we're working in a small area, we've decantered off exactly one gallon. So this is all already mixed and then dispersed into this bucket. So we have one gallon of the uh, Macrolix P12. Now we have our four ounces of the MMA hardener in which we're going to mix into this, uh, this volume right here. Keep in mind the quantity, we got the quantity which was provided in the technical data sheets. It's really crucial that you look at the ambient temperature and it'll give you the chart or the guideline of how much MMA hardener mixes into this Macrolix P12. So we've determined we have our volume, just double check. I'm at four ounces here, you can see right here. And now we're going to mix for two minutes at slow speed. While we're mixing this, let's talk about using the, uh, the Macrolix monomer right here, which uh, basically has one function only, and that's to clean your tools. So during the installation, say uh, on a notch squeegee, for example, um, on a larger installation, if you had to clean your notch squeegee, what you would want to do is use this product. You would not, never use a traditional solvent like acetone or xylene or denatured alcohol to clean your tools because what could happen is if it, there's residual with one of those solvents on a notch squeegee and it dripped onto your floor, it could re-emulsify the product. So for that reason, during the installation, you will only use this, uh, this monomer over here. Now, at the end of the installation, when you're done at the end of the day, Certainly you could use a traditional solvent like I've mentioned to clean your tools. All right, we've mixed for two minutes. Now we're going to use the, uh, the Macrolix monomer to clean. Like I said, we don't want to do it on the substrate. We want to keep our substrate nice and clean. So I'm going to come over here and just simply use a traditional little chip brush and make sure our Jiffy mixer is clean and ready for the next batch. We've mixed our Macrolix P12 for two minutes. Now we're gonna simply pour it into ribbons. And then we'll use our notch squeegee. Remember, at a coverage rate of 100 square feet per mixed gallon. We've applied our material at a coverage rate of 100 square feet per mixed gallon. Now it's time to back roll. Now note, on, on a larger project, obviously you're not gonna use a little nine inch roller. You're gonna use a much, much uh, larger 18 inch roller, which is uh, much more productive than, than we're using here. However, this is just a small little panel, as you can see here. So we're just back rolling it, making sure we don't have puddles. It is a good idea uh, on edges to have somebody cutting in or around any slab penetrations. Go ahead and have somebody cut in with a brush.
We've just finished back rolling after our notch squeegee. Now it's time to apply the either silica sand or in this case, the coarse aggregate. So you're just looking for a consistent uniform coverage rate. Like we said earlier, roughly five to 10 pounds per 100 square feet of material. No clumps, just uniformly distributed across the surface. It's a quick process as you can see. We're getting ready to mix our Macrolux F32 body coat. Prior to that, as a recap, we uh, uh, installed the Macrolux primer and we broadcast, uh, in this case, quartz aggregate. It could have been uh, dried uh, 30 mesh silica sand and then that dried. And then what we did is we uh, swept, scraped and vacuumed all the residual. And that's where this panel is at now. So Macrolux uh, F32 is a flexible MMA reactive resin. Add self-leveling additive in Macrolix F32 and mix thoroughly for one minute using a slow speed drill and a jiffy mixer. After adding filler, add MMA pigment, one quart per five gallons, MMA resin, and continue mixing. Add key Macrolix hardener to Macrolix F32 resin following mix ratio chart in the product data sheet and continue mixing for approximately one to two minutes. Typical slurry mix ratio is 15 to 20 pounds of key self-leveling filler, which is about one to 1.5 gallons per gallon of MMA resin, depending on the temperature and the desired thickness. Pour mixed resin slurry in ribbons and spread evenly with a gauge rake or a trowel at the specified thickness, which usually is a range of between 1 16th of an inch to 1 8th of an inch, or if it's required, you can certainly go thicker. Immediately back roll with a looped roller or a spiny uh, porcupine roller, immediately followed by broadcasting excess sand to refusal, solid color finish or colored quartz uh, decorative finish. Be careful not to clump the aggregate. Once the material is dry, then you come back and you again sweep, scrape and uh, vacuum all of the residual leftover sand. And once that's complete, you're ready to apply uh, your top coats of resin over the top of the surface. We're getting ready to mix our F32. We've pre-weighed out our two gallons of um, MMA resin right here. Um, we've pre-calculated out the filler that you see here. And so the, press, the process is uh, we're always going to mix the filler into your resin. You're gonna mix for a minimum of one to two minutes. We've also pre-determined how much pigment that we're going to, this is a pigmented system. And so once the filler is mixed, we then add the pigment into the mix, mix for an additional um, one to two minutes. And once that's thoroughly mixed, we have our hardener, which again, you can go into the technical data sheet. The amount of hardener is based on the ambient temperature and it'll give you the calculations of how much hardener relative to the resin should be mixed. Um, when you're doing a larger project, it's good to pre-mix your key components. In other words, if you're doing multiple batches, it's a really good idea to have three or four buckets already pre-mixed with your filler and your pigment that all you have to do when the time is ready, you go ahead and just add your hardener because once the hardener is added, the stopwatch starts and you've got a limited time as far as working. Um, once we get it down, we're gonna, gate, we're gonna pour it in ribbons. We're gonna gauge rake it at one eighth of an inch thick. And then once it's all leveled out, we're gonna just take a porcupine roller, back roll it really quickly and then um, in most instances, installers will broadcast uh, 30 mesh dried silica sand to refusal. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna show you another finish, which is not a 100% sand broadcast. All we wanna do is um, add some sand for slip resistance, but we don't wanna cancel out the nice color gray. So in other words, we wanna see the background color of gray, so we won't broadcast sand to refusal for the purpose of this video. All right, we've mixed for a total of three minutes. You can see the consistency of our material, self-leveling. It's 
So I'm going to use our eighth inch gauge rake. It's been set to a depth of an eighth of an inch, as you see here. Simply going to push it into place. You can use the edge here to go up into the corners. All right, we've gauge raked it into place. Uh, it's self-seeked, it's level, really nice. You did see me using a hand trowel to push it into the areas in which I couldn't get a gauge rake. Now, immediately we come back and we just give it a quick back roll using a porcupine roller, which will help, um, help the material for additional leveling. But more importantly, if there's any entrapped air, it'll help uh, displace that air and pop the bubbles. Now, what we'll do is, I mentioned uh, during the mixing segment that we're going to go ahead and broadcast sand. So in normal applications, people might choose to use a 30 mesh silica sand broadcast to refusal. Um, for the purpose of this video, we're going to go ahead and just broadcast a light layer so we don't lose the architectural color of this material. In other words, if we broadcast sand to refusal here, you're going to completely cancel out the gray. So all we want to do is demonstrate providing a non-skid additive for slip resistance and still preserve some of the background gray color. Okay, we've got a nice consistent broadcast of uh, silica sand, dried silica sand over the surface. Um, it, is, it is uniformly distributed. You don't see any clumps or any balls of uh, sand, um, yet we didn't cancel out the gray color. So this is a, a very nice finish to consider as well. All right, we're getting ready to mix our MMA S26 top coat. Um, it is, it is crucial that you have all of your tools ready to go. Um, once the material is mixed, it has a, you know, a short pot life. So you've got to get it out on the floor, get it uh, not squeegee down and get it back rolled. So, um, it is a good idea, by the way, on your three eighths of an inch professional rollers, go ahead and delint them before you, uh, use them. So we'll just take a uh, tape and just roll like this. And despite the fact that this says lint free, on the uh, packaging, you can see there's a lot of lint here um, that we just delinted, so it's a good idea to do that. In terms of mixing, we already have one gallon of our S26 ready to go. We're going to mix the pigment into the S26. We're going to give that at about one to two minutes of uh, mixing. And once we've done that, then we're going to, to uh, mix in our MMA hardener which we've determined for the conditions that we have in the warehouse, which is approximately 60, degree, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, um, we're gonna mix in four ounces of our MMA hardener into the S26. 
Once again, that, that uh, information is provided in the technical data sheets, so in terms of how much hardener you mix into this. So it is a good idea when working with these materials, go ahead and protect yourself, wear a respirator. I can't right now while I'm talking on the camera. So we're gonna mix this pigment for one to two minutes. All right, we've mixed our pigment into the S26. Now we're going to mix our MMA hardener and give it about uh, two to three minutes of thoroughly mixing and then pour it out in a ribbon and get it uh, not squeegeed. Okay, we've mixed for three minutes and uh, we're ready to pour us a ribbon down onto the, onto the substrate. From here, we'll take our notch squeegee and get it out. Now, normally you're gonna walk forward with pushing this material, but we're working in a real cramped, tight little area here. So I'm just gonna kind of use both motions here just to get it into the corners here. There we go. Turn this way. Pour some more material out on the surface. <clears throat> 